Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So this is my what I have read uh, in like spring-ish, April to June, so the second quarter of the year. So I've done kind of a few, um, <laughs> a few for me anyway. Um, so I did try to continue to read seasonally, uh, but I did also then throw in a few extra ones as well. Um, and I tried to think slightly outside of just nature for my seasonal reading, which I was trying to get in a lot more nature stuff because that makes the most sense when you're trying to read seasonally. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I was also incorporating other things, especially when I was reading my non-fiction book. So such as Father's Day was an inspiration for one of the books. Um, and I did continue to manage to include one non-fiction book each month. I also managed to read uh, quite a good range of dates without actually really trying. So the earliest was published in 1815 and the latest was 2023. Most books were set in the UK and or written in English. Um, but there is one by a Malaysian author and then one set in Pakistan. So um, that might be something to look at in the future, um, incorporating more books set outside of the UK. But I am just limited to reading English, so there is that. Um, so April I characterised as spring with slightly warm weather. So spring started in March technically, um, so a bit warmer but still rainy and it's also my birthday month. Um, I didn't do very well with my reading though, I did only manage to read two, got them in this pile. So I read Emma by Jane Austen, published in 1815, so this is my oldest one, and then Eating to Extinction by Dan Saladino, published in 2023, so this was my most recent book actually. Um, I did a full review of Emma, um, which I'll link in the up at the top and below. I liked it, I just like Pride and Prejudice better, that's all. Uh, Eating to Extinction, I feel like I've talked about this before as well, I think I did also a full review of this and also mentioned it in my like top five non-fiction books, um, so it was a pretty good one to read. Um, he's exploring some of the many foods that we are set to lose or have already lost um, and the lack of diversity now in our food, in our diets, in our food system, it's very interesting not always super cheerful, um, but those were two good books. Um, and then in May, I managed to read loads. It was a bit of a cheat though, because I did start one in April and then finish it in May. I characterised May when I was planning my books to read as like April, but warmer. Um, going outside more, getting more involved in nature. I didn't entirely stick to the seasonal plan in May, but like I said, I did manage to read uh, loads. I read six books in a month, which for me is very good. Um, some were quite short, and one of them, um, The Enchanted April, I started in April for fairly obvious reasons. I should have read this first in April, it should be my first book, <laughs> was my last book. Um, I could have finished this in April, but then I got a really bad cold and I just did not have the energy to do anything. So that's why it spilled over into May. So, just collected some of my April books. My books were not organised in my pile. April, no, The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Armin uh, was published in 1922. <clears throat> I didn't love this book. Um, it's got some really nice descriptions of flowers and gardens and stuff. Um, and actually, um, Nancy Mitford talks about it in the book. Oh, that I've forgotten the name of. No, the non-fiction book that I read of hers about gardening. <laughs> um, not much happens in this book though. Four women go on a holiday. One a bored housewife. One housewife with a, who's slightly estranged from her husband due to her religious activities and his job that she thinks is kind of trashy. Um, one old woman who's grumpy and one rich and beautiful woman who's fed up from the kind of empty life that she was living. They go to Italy where the magic of April in Italy manages to revitalise their marriages and bring meaning to their lives. But really it's just really empty, like one of the husbands only visit, one of the women's husbands only visits the villa in order to try and seduce the younger beautiful one using a fake name and he doesn't even know that his wife is staying there. But she's so thrilled to see him thinking that he's come to see her that all the romance returns to their relationship. And I guess that's the joke, but it just seems like it was always at the expense of the female characters and I just didn't love it. So I don't know if that one's for me. But the next 
next one, A Buzz in the Meadow by Dave Golson from 2014, um, I did really like. So it's a non-fiction book, it was my non-fiction for May. It's like a memoir of his, of him buying a um, farm, kind of a derelict farmhouse in rural France. Um, and then he mixes that memoir with <coughs> um, natural history, factual stuff from his um, experience as a uh, scientist and also a student and a teacher. So he recalls his earlier days as a student and a teacher throughout the book. Um, it's kind of old now, 2014, so I don't know if he's written anything more recently. I know that he has written other books, like A Sting in the Tail is his perhaps more well-known book. Um, but I liked this one, and I like the books on the front because I like books. The next one is not particularly seasonal, though this is Lake Like a Mirror by Ho Sok Fong who is the Malaysian author that I mentioned and <laughs> chosen a bit randomly because I liked the title <laughs> let's be honest, the reason I pick most of my books <laughs> um, it's a book of short stories I don't think I realised it was a book of short stories when I bought it even though it does say stories on it in red um, that's how much attention I'm paying to the books I'm buying um, it's exploring the lives of women in modern Malaysia so um, <laughs> the blurb on the back says, a breathtaking collection that explores the lives of Malaysian women, immigrants, rebels, lost souls, pragmatists and dreamers. And that's fairly accurate. Um, there's a mixture of like everyday domesticity, so the title Lake Like a Mirror is actually a line from one of the stories set in a kind of makeshift hair salon. Um, there's also slightly surreal or ghostly like stories like the, there's a story of a young woman who is working in her aunt's hotel and she keeps kind of letting one of the rooms to a guest who checks in then checks out and then the next night he checks back in again but acts like it's his first time ever being there and doesn't recognise her. I never really get to the bottom of what's happened there. Um, there's also a strong theme of religion that runs through the stories. There's a couple that are set in rehab rehabilitation centres for Muslims, so to rehabilitate them back to Islam, I guess, which is very interesting. And again, I read these books and I realise I don't know anything about the countries that they're set in, and so now I need to learn more about Malaysia and every single other country on the planet, basically. Um, Moving on to something a little bit different, so The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie from 1942. Um, I think this is the first Miss Marple book that I've read. I have read a few of the Poirots and I've watched almost all of the Poirots and Marples, which is why I decided that I want to work my way through Agatha Christie's books and particularly the Miss Marples because I kind of prefer those adaptations to the Poirots. One thing was like the modern, the more recent adaptations of the Miss Marples are kind of bonkers and just seem to have like strayed so far away from the original plot and added in like new characters. They really sex it up a bit as well, which I guess is understandable. But it's just so strange to me, like the, what they've done. And I thought, well, I've never actually read the book, so I should probably read the books to check and make sure that that doesn't actually happen before I judge them. But um, I think I'm right, and I think the modern versions are just weird. Anyway, uh, I decided to start with the body in the library because it was cheap on World of Books, so it's just a second-hand copy. Um, I was a bit disappointed with this actually, like Miss Marple really doesn't feature very much in the book, and the police do more of the work, which makes much more sense really, although I did get a bit confused as to which police guy was which, there seemed to be like a few, there's like probably less, I think they cut some of the characters out in the adaptation that I like of this. Um, I just got a bit confused. Um, somehow Miss Marple figured out what happened and I wasn't totally convinced as to how she managed to do that. Um, but I will read more of them because they are short and easy and I quite like the characters that, you know, I kind of know. Uh, so my next book is Westwood by Stella Gibbons from 1946. I've read Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons and liked it, that was quite funny. I feel like this, uh, seemed quite a different, like, style. Um, the blurb just said it's a delightfully comic and wistful tale of love and longing. I don't know that I found it delightfully comic, but it is set in wartime London and it was written or published at least in 1946, so it was written very soon after World War II by someone that presumably lived through World War II in London, or at least in the UK, but I presume London. Um, and 
those are the bits, the descriptions of London in World War II that were the most interesting and appealing and it's this interesting combination of how the war has completely changed everyone's lives and um, so one of the main characters um her, her friend so there's margaret is the main character and then her friend hilda is like the second main character i guess and um, she's working in like a uh, ration book office or something i can't remember but um so there's war has affected all of their lives and their jobs and their plans and um obviously um a lot of buildings and houses have been destroyed and things but simultaneously life seems to be continuing for them kind of as normal and they go to concerts and things although one of the uh, plays that they go to and um, there's like a uh, uh, a thingy goes off, a siren or whatever, like that there might be potential um, bombs so they all have to, they have, they have to like leave and hide in, in the um, shelters. So it's just this like, weird combination of like everything being affected by the war and war having changed all their lives but also life still seeming to continue somewhat as normal and I don't know, I just found it really interesting. Um, the actual story was kind of secondary to me and it's uh, uh, a woman who is a teacher but she's like lost in lost her motivation for teaching and she becomes somewhat involved and enamoured with the um, life of a famous playwright who is just a bit obnoxious and unlikable and it's just a bit odd that she's like so keen to like get in with that crowd because they're not very nice to her um, and then her friend Hilda who is now being courted by the same guy unbeknownst to her because he uses a fake name because he is married and I don't know which bit was supposed to be funny but like anyway um, I did quite like it I rambled I rambled and I couldn't remember half of the words that I was trying to say during that <laughs> um, so my next book is uh, Season of the Rainbirds by Nadine Aslam um, from uh, published in 1993 but set in the 1980s in a small town in Pakistan and it gives a kind of snapshot of daily life amidst like political corruption, violence, religion and daily rituals. Sorry, I just had to stop then for like a coughing fit, but I think I'm back. So, um, Season of the Rainbirds, the blurb on the back is very misleading because it focuses on some letters that were lost in a train crash 19 years ago that have now been found and are being like sent out to the um, correct recipients of them, original recipients of them. And then the blurb on the back is like, how could they relate to the murder of the corrupt judge Anwar who has been murdered um, early on, pretty much at the start of the book? And so, yeah, certainly the judge has been killed at the book and there is a, the police investigation throughout the book and the lost letters I refer to a few times. But this is not a murder mystery and the book just kind of seems to stop without much of a satisfying conclusion about how the letters f uh, it, like fit in at all with the murder of the judge or really anything. Like, they don't really seem to be that big of a deal. So I think the blurb is misleading and then you'll be disappointed. But actually, if you just ignore that, and you just think of it as a window into another time and place. I think it works really well and I actually like enjoyed the reading of it and would quite like to read more by the same author. So that was May, um, like I said my bumper month. So moving on to June, which we are still technically in June, it is the 28th, so I could in theory read another book or at least start another book but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> um, so I've got three from June. So the first one was The Hours Before Dawn, which I've got some tabbies for. So this was by Celia Fremlin from 1959. Um, so now I've read a couple of books by Celia Fremlin. The other one was The Long Shadow, which is this one. So annoyingly I kind of missed the opportunity to get the matching covers because I bought this second hand and I didn't think. Um, but I did uh, 
the full review of this one, um, of um, The Hours Before Dawn, I really liked it. So uh, in The Hours Before Dawn, Louise is a housewife and she's so sleep deprived with a new baby that she begins to suspect that her new lodger isn't all she seems, but is she just imagining it? Is the basic premise of the book. There's so much in here about motherhood and the burden placed on women. Um, in the 1950s, very relatable today though still. Um, but I, I, I really liked this book. Um, so I recommend. Um, the next book was the one that was inspired by Father's Day as my non-fiction book for June. Uh, so it's Barack Obama, Dreams of My Father. So this is the book he wrote in 1995. Just as a her recap, Barack Obama was the President of the United States of America twice and also before that he was a US Senator and uh, he studied law. So this book um, was published after he became the first African American to be the editor of the Harvard Law Review which apparently is quite prestigious, hence the interest. Um, and so, but it is a memoir of his life but this is Barack Obama's memoir from 1995 before he became a senator or the US president. Um, so he discusses his early childhood and his community organising work in Chicago, which just seemed quite interesting, and a trip to Kenya where he went to meet his family on his father's side because his father was Kenyan. He explores his thoughts about race and about his race, um, as well as his thoughts about his father, who he spent very little time with before he died because he his parents separated when, when Barack Obama Jr. was only two and then he, Barack Obama Sr. went back to Kenya and then he came back when um, Barack Obama Jr. was a teenager and they spent a month together and that's pretty much the only time they had. Um, I found it a little dull. I, there's nothing really wrong with it and it's interesting subjects and topics and he has had a more interesting life than I ever will but if he wasn't Barack Obama, who is the former president of the United States, I don't think this would be that interesting. And actually he does say, because this is the 2004 edition, just before he got elected, it's like a reprint, and he has a little preface in there that says like, he didn't sell very well at the time. <laughs> and I can kind of see why. Um, yeah, sorry Barack. So my last book for um, this quarter is Summer by Alice Smith, published in 2020. So this is the fourth in the Alice Smith Seasons series. So I've now read the complete set, although frustratingly, I only actually have three of them. I don't, I don't know where Autumn has gone to. So now I have to decide whether to buy Autumn again. Uh, Summer is set in the outbreak of the pandemic. I mean, it was published in 2020. Um, it's really weird to read about that time. I know it was only a few years ago, but it feels like both like yesterday and also a million years ago. Like, it's so odd. Anyway, it features a like separated family, so the parents have separated. There is a politically engaged daughter and a troubled son um, who's been bullied at school and now he's like, um, you know, just not going to school and like causing a bit of mischief. Um, they encounter some of the characters from the previous books um, and Smith talks about how, how politicians are always using references to World War II and so then we also go back in time to World War II to meet another brother and sister. Um, the brother is a German living in England who then has been interned with his father by the UK government. I did not realise that the UK government did that in the 1940s at the outbreak of World War II. I need to fact check this but I kind of assume it must have happened, otherwise it wouldn't be in the book because it would be something so easy to fact check. But it's very much like, I guess, the American internment of Japanese Americans at the start of, or well, after Pearl Harbor, so in the middle of World War II. Anyway, so he's been interned in the UK by the British government. His sister is living in France now, helping people get fake papers to try to escape. Um, and then their lives... Uh, you know, the two families' lives turn out to be somewhat linked. Um, it's political, as with all her books, and it's also emotional, as uh, her books do also touch on like upsetting things, like in this one. 
World War Two and the pandemic and she mentions Brexit because she also always mentions Brexit. Um, I liked it. It might be one of like my favourite of the four actually. Uh, not sure. The covers also are really nice. So if I had autumn, you'd be able to see the whole whole season seasonal set, but I don't. Uh, David Hockney's. I was just thinking they look like David Hockney's. These are David Hockney's artworks. That's why they're nice. That is all the books for this three months, April to June. Um, let me know what you think. If you've got any more suggestions of books, I would love to um, hear them. So just let me know that in the comments. I do have many books on my to read list though, and I'm not the quickest reader, so. <laughs> um can't promise i'll get onto them but yeah give me a like and subscribe to see more of these videos